Hello friends, how are we all doing today? Today we are doing my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year and I'm so excited. I was trying to bang the desk but still drum roll. <laughs> I started doing these at my desk so I can more clearly see my spreadsheet and also if I have to look up any of the, the <laughs> synopses again I can. I have read through all these synopses multiple times but I'm not going to read out the whole synopses of of each of these to you because that's not interesting. So I'm just gonna give you the key bits of information that I remember and I think make each of these books interesting. So this is all the releases from July to December and I'm just so excited for so many of these. I always seem to think that I have a better second half of the year in terms of reading wise and I'm just really excited for a lot of these releases. So shall we just get into it? I don't think there's anything else to say, it's hot. I'm hot, by the way, it's hot in the UK. You think, Megan, why are you wearing a long sleeve shirt? And that's because all of my t-shirts I've worn already and I need to do a clothes wash. <laughs> Let's just get into it and discuss my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. So first we have Jade Shards by Fonda Lee. I'm really excited for this. I don't know how accessible this is going to be in terms of like how easy it is gonna to be to get your hands on it, but this is a novella collection following characters from the Greenbone Saga. So if you've read Jade City, Jade War, Jade Legacy, I'm not ready. <laughs> for more stories following these characters. I think it's gonna be mainly prequels is my understanding of it. But yeah, I loved this series. I Particularly Jade War and Jade Legacy, I thought were incredible. You're following like this mafia family where also Jade is like this, uh, what's the word? People get their magic, their power from Jade. And I just loved the series and the family and everything. And so I'd be excited to follow more. But again, I don't know how easy this one's because I think it's kind of like indie published a little bit maybe. Or like it's a small publisher publishing this novella. So I don't know how easy it's going to be to get your hands on it. Then we have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Listen, I have read every Riley Sager. <laughs> Some of the only authors that I've read all of their books. But That's not normal. And I think... You know, you should maybe get some help or something. But like, me and Riley, we have our ups, we have our downs. I really enjoyed The House Across the Lake, which was his release last year. So listen, I'm hoping for good things. And the only one left sounds really good. We're following this uh, character who I think in the 80s, her whole family was killed. And there's this kind of old folklore, old nursery rhyme that says that she killed her whole family. I think it's now that she can't speak. She's now elderly. And we've got a character looking after her and I think trying to find out the truth. But yeah, I really enjoyed some of the direction that Ryosake has been taking his books. I mean, Survive the Night was hot trash, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, Survive the Night didn't necessarily work for me because it was like, there's an event happening in the moment and that we know that one of these characters in the storyline is responsible for, and we've got a very small cast of characters. Whereas this one is more like focusing on this woman. Did she do what is suspected of her? Then we've got Myrtle, we'll just... <laughs> Mention this one quickly. This is like a puzzle book. I've seen a lot of murder mystery authors that I follow, like on Twitter and Instagram, getting copies of this. It's not like a book, it's not like a fiction book or a non fiction book. It's like a puzzle book where you're trying to solve different murders. A clue! You have to cross things out, you get clues, and it helps you find out the true culprit. I don't know. I am intrigued. I would like to get my hands on it and do some mystery puzzles. Why not? <laughs> then we've got Everyone Here Is Lying by Shari Lapina. Oh, I also just want to say all of these release dates are UK release dates, and some might have moved around a bit. I tried to double check these, but sometimes I might have put this book on my spreadsheet like at the start of the year, and now the date has changed. So much change. But all of these, I I checked most of them, so unless I missed something. You know, this is roughly when these books are being published. We've got a dad who I think is having an affair and he's visiting his mistress and the affair breaks down. He goes home and he's like angry or whatever. His daughter is there and then his daughter is missing. So it's like, did he do something to the daughter? What happened there? Sherry Lapina is an author I've read a lot from before as well. And I have mixed, you know, I've had mixed experiences. I didn't like her most recent release, Not Happy Family, as much as some of her other books. All of her other books I've enjoyed. She's been like a solid four star thriller author for me. Then we have A Very Lively Murder by Katie Watson. I'm really excited about this. Not a lot of people have read The Three Dahlias, but I read it last year. And The Three Dahlias, the first book in the series, is basically just a love letter. Oh shit. <laughs> it's basically a love letter to the golden age of murder mysteries, you know? It's like very, we're talking about Agatha Christie, but we're not. We have this author who wrote this very famous detective and we're following three women who have played that very famous detective throughout the years. And they're going to the estate of the author and there's like a fan convention being held there and then murders start to ensue. In this one, I think two of them are on a film set for like the new 
film following this detective and murders start happening on the film set. These are just fun books, right? I don't think these are like five star, but I really enjoyed the like respect and the love that it showed the genre in the first book so I'm hoping that will continue in the second. Then we have A Guide to the Dark. This one I just heard about and I thought it sounded cool. It's YA and I believe it's sapphic. It's pitched as A Haunting of Hill House meets Nina LaCour who if you know me I know like you know I love Nina LaCour. Also hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on. Does Nina LaCour have a book coming out? <laughs> oh she does but I think it's like kids. Okay she's got like kids not like picture books coming out. Okay. So we've got these two best friends who I think are stranded in this like motel or hotel. I think it's like this ghost story. Yeah, I think one of them's brother has died, but then in the hotel, I think people have died there before and it's them trying to connect with the ghost. I don't know. I really liked the cover. I thought this sounded interesting and I'm trying to read like more, I think YA horror I do enjoy. I'm not a big scaredy girl for like mainstream horror. I just don't think I can hack it. I can't do it. You can. Can't. You can do it. You can. You can. And then we have Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Something about Silvia Moreno Garcia, I always struggle to pitch her plots. <laughs> like I've struggled with it with uh, Dr. Dr. Monroe, with um, Velvet Was the Night. Like I, I do struggle with her plots. This one I think is about the film industry. I think we're following characters in the film industry. In, I think in the 90s in Mexico City, there's something about like magic in silver nitrate and like magic films being made. I don't know. The thing with Silver Moreno Garcia is I do just kind of go into her books blind <laughs> and I just accept that that's something I'm gonna do. I, but Silver Moreno Garcia's got a new book coming out and everyone should be excited because I'm excited. So then we have None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell and I'm really excited for this one. I'm excited for the audiobook of this one in particular because this one, we're following these two women. One of them is a podcaster, meets the other one and I think they become kind of entangled up in their lives and they're getting to know each other and one of them goes missing and the other one is producing a podcast about it and the podcast, it says, is like fully produced, like full cast, audio sound effects. This was the no-brainer. This was the banker. This was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. If you're gonna do a podcast, the audiobook needs to be full cast. It needs to be sound effects. It needs, it needs to give me everything. I'm sorry, anything less is an insult. <laughs> if you're giving me a podcast and a book, the audiobook has to like step it up, you know? So I'm really, really excited for this. Lisa Jewell, I have read how many books? Maybe just the one, maybe The Found Upstairs, which I did enjoy, I didn't love. I have a few more, I think, on my TBR, maybe one more. Um, but I'm intrigued by this one. It sounds interesting and I'm a sucker for a podcast. I'm a sucker for any mixed media element. Next, we have The List by Yomi Adadake. And I think it, this author was like a non-fiction author. I think she's like a, what did she write? Like Slay in Your Lane? I think, that was, I think that's what she wrote before. But this is her fiction debut. And all I know about this one is that we're like following this character who has a boyfriend, she wakes up, there's this list published of all these terrible people who have done terrible things. And usually she'd be like tweeting it out, like calling these people out. Turns out though, her guy is on the list. He's on the list. <laughs> I, I was shocked. I was shocked. So yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one. I think this one is going to get a lot of hype, so I'm excited to see what I think of it. Then we have Ruth Ware's new book, Zero Days, which I'm a bit nervous about. It like sounds like Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of thing. Like, I don't know if they're assassins, but it's about a husband and wife, and then the husband is found dead, and she's like the main suspect, essentially. And here's the thing, right? We know husband and wife thrillers is not my thing. I think this is more of a suspense kind of thriller than like a mystery, which I prefer from Ruth Ware. I tend to prefer her mysteries. Me and Ruth Ware, typically she does me well. Like I have a lot of five stars from her. I think I love some Ruth Ware's that like other people haven't loved. You know, I think I've given her three five stars at this point. So like we have good luck with each other, but not always. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. I'm really excited for this one, guys. I'm really excited for it. So I think this is where there was this like kids TV show back in the day with Mr. Magic and it got like wiped. There's no, you can't see shows of it anymore. You can't see like old tapings of it. There's no tapings that exist of this show. And the cast, I think are called to this location where maybe Mr. Magic is there. Maybe like death is going to happen. I've never read Kirsten White and I know Hyde didn't have the best, you know, reception. But I'm really excited about this one. It reminds me of like, you know, a Disney show, like the, and then it's been wiped and it's like old, like 
you know, internet lore about this show. It just sounds so juicy to me. So this is actually what I'm most excited for. I can't wait and I'm hoping it's gonna be good. Then we have Thornhead by T. Kingfisher. This is her like fantasy release. She's had a kind of horror release earlier this year and this is her fantasy release. And I just know there's like, a princess, there's a toad, there's a knight in shining armor. That's what I really need to know. I really want to get into more Tea King Fisher. Have I read a Tea King Fisher yet? Or do I just own lots of them? I still don't think I've read one. <laughs> No, I think I own like three Tea King Fishers, but I haven't read one yet, but like it's on the list. We're gonna get around to it eventually. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister, I'm really excited for. So this girl goes missing. I mean, we know I love Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister, but this girl goes missing and the policewoman is like trying to find out what happened. But in order to save her family, this policewoman has to pin the missing disappearance on someone else. Just that doesn't get. It's camp, it's camp, I don't know what to tell you. I'm excited, I'm so excited. I really love Wrong Place, Wrong Time, so I'm so excited to see what Julie McAllister does next. Then we have Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is following this group of women, this family, and I think they can kind of sense like how someone's gonna die, or one of them can, and she calls for like a living wake, essentially, and the girlies are like, what the fuck, is she, gonna, she knows she's gonna die? Like, I was like, <laughs> what's going on and that's what I really know about it other than that I think there's a lot of other women and they've got individual storylines and characteristics but um I'm really excited about this I love Elizabeth Alvarez's stuff and I think this is her adult debut so I'm really excited to see how I mean she has the most beautiful like lyrical lush writing so I'm really excited to see how that transfers into an adult book then we have Lights by Brenna Thumner this is the third in the Sheets graphic novel series where we have Wendell who's like a ghost but he's like just like a sheet with a heart <laughs> this is a hole and and I really love this series. I particularly love the second one. I'm excited to finish off this series. I thought the second one was the end, but it's not. This is like the promised finale, basically. And then we have Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I'm really excited for this one too. It's vampires. It's vampires. I think there's like a war going on and we're following two characters who had previously been lovers as well. And there's a vampire like killing everyone. I'm into vampires. I feel like I haven't read a good vampire book in a long time. I used to, I mean, I was a Twilight girly. What can I say? We are going to pretend pretend we didn't hear that so then i was like a paranormal romance girly when i was like 13 like i read a lot of paranormal like evermore the beautiful dead like if anyone remembers any of these you know that was my that was my shit <laughs> So I'm excited for a vampire vibe. Then we have A Fire at the Exhibition by T.E. Kinsey. I'm putting this on the list. This is like the 10th Lady Hardcast mystery. I'm only up to like the 6th, so I have got a way to go. But I'm aiming to get caught up on the series this year. Like I'm just loving reading them. They're just so fun, right? It's my favorite cozy mystery series. We're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo, and it's just joyous and funny, and I love the relationship, and it's, oh, I just love it. This one, I think there's like a museum exhibition, and there's a fire, and there's a death. There's always a murder. Then we have Mammoths at the Gates by Nevo. This is the fourth in the Singing Hill cycle. I still haven't read the third one, but I am excited about this one. So this is like short novellas, kind of focusing on the act of storytelling. We're following Chi, who's a cleric, and they absorb stories. They like listen to stories from other people and like record them. It's like a spoken history through stories, essentially. And this one, I think, um, their mentor has died and um, when they go back home, their mentor has died and the mentor's sisters are like trying to get in to take the mentor's body, but that's not what the mentor wanted. So yeah, I really love the first two in the series. I would like to get to the second two as quickly as I can. Then we have Rouge by Mona Award. I know a lot of you are Mona Award girlies. I am yet to be. I haven't read All's Well, but Bunny, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, oh my god, this is the worst literature ever, which I feel like a lot of people were. A horror-tinted gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. Can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is more than skin deep? So it's very much about like beauty and like the quest for beauty and like how that can be like, I don't know, horror, you know? So I'm intrigued, I, listen. Maybe I'll become a Mona or Wild Girly. Who knows? <laughs> then we have The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. This is the fourth of the Thursday Murder Club series. I've already got it pre-ordered. I'm so excited. It comes out in September, mid-September here in the UK. But like I've said before, I always tend to read these in November. November to me is Murder Mystery Month. 
Like it's murder mystery hotspot, murder mystery vibes, murder mystery month, you know? I'm really excited for this one. I think like an old friend of theirs dies and so they're on the quest to find out what happened. But again, this is one that I don't feel like you really need to do the synopsis. You know we've got the Thursday Murder Club who are a group of elderly characters who are solving murders together. And it is my favorite series ever, maybe. It's up there. I mean, I've given them all five stars. <laughs> it's one of my favorite series ever. I love Richard Osman's writing. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do, but I do. Like it to me is perfection. It's everything I want in a murder mystery. I'm obsessed. I know it's not for everyone. I think if you're not from the UK, a lot of the, the humor and particularly the references, like it's got some niche, 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 niche. <laughs> British references, I can understand how it might not be your thing. You know, particularly like in the third book, I'm just thinking about we've got a character who's like on local news, right? He's like a local news anchor. And like, if you're not from the UK, you don't understand the kind of people that are our local news anchors. Not the national news anchors, but like are a local news anchor. As someone who used to do journalism, and so like I visited some local news radio stations and stuff when I used to do like work experience. Um, it's a certain kind of person. <laughs> It's a second kind of person. And I just feel like those references, you know, if not from the UK, I can understand why you wouldn't love it as much as I do. But I mean, I'm just obsessed, I'm obsessed. Oh, then we have one I'm really excited for. We have The Collectors, which is an anthology. It's edited by A.S. King, which like, A.S. King, I love you. <laughs> I need to finish reading like my backlist of all my A.S. Kings. But um, yeah, I know Anna Marie McCormore is also in this anthology. It's a short story about characters who collect things, basically. It sounds very interesting, but I'm really excited. I don't read enough anthologies, I feel like. So guys, just, oh my God, you don't understand. I love making this video so much because just talking about this to you is like igniting a fire within myself. I'm like, Sorry if the position has changed, I just closed the window because I felt like I was getting a bit noisy, but it is hot. <laughs> so, you know, but I will suffer in the heat for you. Next we have The Odds by my friend Lindsay Puckett. I got to meet Lindsay a couple weeks ago in London when she was over visiting and it was amazing. It was so nice to meet her. I still haven't read The Glass Witch because it's a pain to get in the UK. I'm not gonna lie. It's like, it's a little bit tricky to get in the UK. So I haven't managed to get my hands on it yet, but I'm really excited for The Odds, which is her next book. Um, I think this is following a girl who's like grown up in an old people's home or something. And she has to find out what her power is by a certain birthday. I always remember her calling this The Odd Book when she was writing it. She called it The Odd Book and now it's called The Odds. But yeah, it sounds really, really, really fun. And um, I wanna read more middle grade. I feel like I don't read enough middle grade right now. Then we have Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I've only read one Ashley Winstead at the moment, which is uh, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, but I, I do really wanna read more. I own The Last Housewife, it's wrapped up. It's one of the books I'm most excited to read and like most wanna read right now. Ashley Winstead is another author whose synopses always evade me a little bit. So I've just pulled this one up to try and remember. We're set in like the South in like a Baptist, like devil fearing, place but there's like myths about a vampire um and a skull is found deep in a swamp next to mysterious carb symbols everyone goes crazy it's getting weird I don't know, I am excited for this one. It's one that the synopses, like some synopses like stick in your brain, like, okay, I get the vibe. I know what we're going for. This one, I still don't know what we're going for, but I do, I really love religion as like a theme in, <laughs> in books. And I think dark, like you can really get like dark with religion. I don't know. Um, so I'm excited for this one. Okay, then we've got Last to Leave the Room by Caitlin Starling. So I've only read one Caitlin Starling and it was The Death of, the Death of Jane Lawrence feel like it was called, um, which I didn't love, but I still own The Luminous Dead and I really want to read it. And I feel like I would love The Luminous Dead. But lastly, the room we're following this scientist who like opens a door, I think, like another world or whatever, and finds like her doppelganger, like a clone of her. And as her and the clone spend more time together, she starts like losing her memory or whatever, and the clone seems to be getting better. And it's, it sounds very dark and very strange. And I'm hoping that me and Caitlin Starling will vibe this time. I feel in my bones, I feel good vibes, I'm hopeful for us. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Oh, then we have The Moon of the Turning Leaves by Will Big Shig Rice. I am so excited for this one. So this is the sequel to The Moon of the Crusted Snow, where in that first book we're following uh, an indigenous community basically in the apocalypse and like what happens when they are kind of like already cut off from the rest of like, you know, big cities, whatever, they're kind of living in their own community and how how they find out about this apocalypse and like how they cope with that. And this seems to be a sequel like 10, 20 years on or something like that. And I'm nervous because I feel like The Moon of the Crested Snow was a perfect like standalone kind of 
eerie. It's classed as horror, I guess. I don't know what I would ex class it as, but I loved it. I loved Moon of the Crust Design. I thought it was incredible. And so I'm excited for a sequel, but I'm also incredibly nervous because I thought the Moon of the Crust Design firstly has a great ending that's kind of like an open ending that is open to interpretation in many ways. And I thought that was so great about it. So I'm so nervous about this one. And, <laughs> and I just don't know if it needed a sequel. So I'm intrigued to see where this one goes, but I'm going to read it because I loved the first one so much. Then we have The Fall of Wit Rivera by Chris. Crystal Maldonado. So this is going to be my third Crystal Maldonado. I loved Fat Chance Charlie Vega. I didn't love the other one. What was the more recent one? I read it on holiday last year. No Filter and Other Lies. I didn't love No Filter and Other Lies as much, but this one sounds fun. I think this one is like ex relationship, like, you know, exes to lovers kind of thing. Krista Maldonado writes what I think is like fun YA, but also tackles difficult topics. So I think this one is going to tackle some difficult topics. I think it, uh, the main character maybe has polycystic ovaries, which I haven't read a lot in YA, and I love to see that representation because I. As a young child, as a young girl, believed I had polycystic ovaries. Basically, I got told, oh yeah, you have polycystic ovaries when I was like 16. And then when I was like 20, I went back for another scan. They were like, no, you don't. So whatever. But as someone who, you know, experienced that, I feel like it would have been great to read that representation when I was young. So I'm so glad to see that in a book. Then we have The Christmas Appeal. Guys, guys, Janice Hallett has written the sequel to The Appeal, set a Christmas. <laughs> I'm gonna collapse. No, I don't. I feel faint. I've struck gold, ladies. <laughs> I'm excited. I didn't love the appeal, but I've gone on to love her other books. So I'm hoping that was just like a debut. The, the Some aspects of it didn't really work for me. I still think it's great. Like, I still think it's great, but I didn't... Here's the thing. The, the appeal was a five-star prediction, and it was like... Not a five star. The fact that it was not a five star was so crushing to me. I think I gave it like a 3.5, but really it's a four. Like if we're being honest with ourselves, it was a four. It was so much fun. So yeah, they're holding like a Christmas fate or something and Santa dies. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I think Janice Hallett, she's got like another book coming out in like January or February next year. This woman is crazy. She's churning them out. Then we have Starling House. This is Alex E. Harrow's next book. This is another one that I've read the synopsis so many times for and it hasn't quite sunk into my brain. We've got a haunted house. So no one remembers when the house was built. Everyone agrees it's that best let the house and its last lonely air go to rot. The house is uncanny and ugly and full of secrets just like its air. Okay, I'm excited. I love Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I love it like deeply love it. <laughs> so I'm really excited for her to have a new like novel release. She's had like novellas the past couple of years, but I'm excited for a full length novel. Then we have got Heartstopper volume five. Palace, I swear. <sighs> it's no longer the last Heartstopper guys. We've got one more after this. <laughs> I feel a little bit like protective of Heartstopper because like I loved it and then now everyone loves it and I'm like, it's not allowed. <laughs> I think we're kind of almost catching up with the plot of the novella Nick and Charlie, where Nick is gonna go away to university, he's starting to think about what university he's going to, and obviously Charlie is a year younger, like school-wise, than him. And so it's them figuring that out and like being sad that they're not gonna be together, <laughs> basically. Oh, and then we have Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. I'm so excited. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which is probably still my favorite book that I've read this year. This is a prequel set at a library. I think there's like some kind of owl creature. <laughs> I'm just so excited. Legends and Lattes is everything I've ever wanted in a book. It is heartwarming. It is beautiful. The relationship, the journey. Ah, it was so good. So I'm really excited for Books from Bone Dust to come out. One of my most anticipated releases of the year. Then we only have two more guys. We have Check and Mate by Ali Hayeswood. This is Ali Hayeswood's first YA, which I'm really excited for. I think it's about like chess players and a prom and like falling in love. I don't know. You don't need to know the plot. You just need to know it's a YA, Ali Hayeswood. I was telling my mum, because she loves Ali Hayeswood, she was like, yeah, but like, there's not gonna be any sex. <laughs> she was like, that's what I come to Ali Hayeswood for. I'm like, okay, but like, we can still, we still love her writing, the relationships, whatever. So um, I'm really excited for this and excited to see how she transfers into YA. And finally, we have Dark Corners by Megan Golding. This is the sequel to The Night Swim, if you've read that. We're following the same podcaster. I think there's this guy in prison and an influencer visits him and then she goes missing or is found dead or something along those lines and the podcaster is investigating it. I really love The Night Swim. I thought it was a great book. The podcast element was great but also you know that one was like tackling sexual assault and like a court case around that and I'd love to read more court case books actually. I feel like I don't read a lot of them but I really love that setting. So yeah excited for that one to come out.
that is all my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. Like I said, nothing for December yet. Let me know if any of these you're excited for and let me know what other new releases you're excited for. Like I tried to keep this list fairly, I could go crazy, right? And add every book that I think sounds incredible. But a lot of these are from authors that I have read before. And that's kind of what I prioritize apart from like, if there's any books that I just think sound so cool that I need to include. So yeah, that is my most anticipated releases for the rest of this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.